Hey y'all, it's Chrissy Cook from Tea Dottles. It is time for Tea Dottles Talk Talks episode number, I think it's number 45 or 46. I don't know, but it'll say in the title. <laughs> um, so first let's say welcome new subscribers. Welcome back subscribers. I'm happy to have you here in my maker shenanigans. I do like to do the sewing things the yarny things and the DIY things so you will see a little bit of all of that here I do consider this a maker channel so if you like to make things you might like it here and I'm wearing my hashtag maker life shirt today I uh, love the little rainbow letters um, I believe I got this from 3am grace designs I'm pretty sure that's who I got it from so I will check and I will put a link down below if you want to go check them out. They have a lot of fun. Uh, it's not Amiga. It is Amigurumi, but they call it Kawa? Kawai? It's K-A-W-A-I-I. -I, however you say that. Uh, patterns it's with the little face on it, which is a specific kind of little beady eye smile face, I guess. I don't know. Anyway. I'm having... Hit me with your best pot cup today. It's my afternoon cup of coffee. It is... After 4 o'clock. I was going to do this earlier. But then I realized something was coming in today in the mail. That I really wanted to show y'all. So I waited on it. I'm so glad I did. Because it's a satin. It's a satin to me. It's really cool looking. I think y'all gonna like it. Anyway, so first let's do some admin and life update things, I suppose. Um, finished up spring semester last week, had to turn in my grades. Most of my students did really good at keeping up with their stuff. Had a few that, you know, uh, they asked us to do incompletes so they could work on it a little longer because of the situation, which is understandable. Um, my summer semester starts May 27th, which I've realized is the very same day that I made my doctor's appointment for some reason. I don't know, usually I try to look at that to schedule it when I'm out of school. Since I'm not a full-time teacher, I'm adjunct, I'm only part-time, I try not to miss days if I don't have to. Uh, which is not really that big a deal because we're going to be online for the first half of the summer semester at least. So, I'm just going to send out stuff the day before and let them know that, hey, I won't be available till later in the afternoon if you have questions. Um, I have one new student, which that's going to be interesting because <laughs> currently I'm just dealing with students I already had before. I had one new student in spring, but at least I had built up a rapport with him <laughs> for part of the spring semester um so having a new a brand new student online that's gonna be fun not really now online teaching is not i don't like it <laughs> there's some aspects of it that are great um i like them being able to have access to things so they don't have to ask me repeatedly like i lost my syllabus can i have another one um so that will stay online for sure whenever we finally go back to some kind of regular classroom uh so they can I like look on your blackboard instead anyway um it's just frustrating to a certain extent because you somebody sends you a question and when you when you see it, then you have to answer it, which may take a minute sometimes, depends on what they ask me. And then I had to send it back and see if they understand it, and they have more questions. You know, it's just like a back and forth thing that takes longer because you're not sitting there talking directly to someone. I'm a pretty good typer because I do it on my computer. Now texting, I cannot do the thumb texting thing. It's a this is it's tiny. I can't deal with that. I learned to type on an electric typewriter. So, um, yeah, the typing is better for me. 
I had to learn to type without looking. So I'm pretty good at that. Anyway, it's just a little more time consuming and to get things done, it seems to me. Anywho, they are going to open back up the school to staff, like the 18th or something. So if you need to go, but you have to wear masks and you have to do all this stuff. I'm not going to go unless I have to. I may have to go do some tutorials for my next student because I don't have the programs on my computer because my computer wouldn't hold it. So we'll see. Um, but we also got some kind of stinky news that it's budget cuts in the state. Of course there's going to be budget cuts because of everything that's happening, right? And anyway, it's going to, there's going to be cuts at the school, like jobs cut, which I'm seriously hoping is not my job, but I feel bad for anybody who it happens to, so that's really sad, but that's what it is. I'm hoping that I'm technically the only one doing the drafting department at that school, even though I'm an adjunct, so I'm hoping, because they would have to close down the whole program if they did that, so I don't know. It's a little scary, but it would give me more time to make bags. <laughs> anyway, I, that's something that this bit just kind of hangs over your head after you have a meeting like that. Um, but I think that our president handled it very well. He did a, a little group video chat for call-in phone thing, and he told us, is to our face as he could at this moment in time. He didn't just like send out a random email about it. So I thought that was good because I've had bosses that just like to send out emails and not do face-to-face -face things, which is really immature. Anywho, so there's that going on. So I still have a few things I've got to do. Got a meeting coming, a couple meetings this week that I got to do for school, but I don't, I'm not doing one with the students right now. I have some students registered for summer. Um, so yeah, we'll see how all that goes. Um, what else life related? Ooh. Had to go to Walmart again. Y'all, that's just a exhausting experience going to the grocery store <laughs> nowadays we do have the directional arrows in our aisles now but you know most people are ignoring them much like they ignore road signs <laughs> so i did see um, more people wearing masks than not wearing masks but it's just exhausting because just I go as early as the store opens. Our store opens at seven because we don't have like some people have that Instacart or you can pick order and pick up. We don't have that at our Walmart at all. We didn't have it before, and we certainly don't have it now. So it's you have to go get it if you need it. It's my husband picks up stuff on his way home from work occasionally that we need randomly like milk or bread. You know, eggs we pretty much get from my parents because. Uh, they help. They help someone take care of chickens. Okay, I'll cut that part out because y'all don't want to see that. That was like a hair or something on my mouth. It's getting in my mouth. It's irritating. <laughs> Anywho, oh, this coffee's really good. It's super fresh. Um, what else is going on? I feel like I had a lot of stuff to tell y'all for this part, and now my brain is just gone completely. I should have wrote it down. I used to write it down, and I just get on here and start talking. I put all my stuff out. We got a lot of stuff to show y'all today, though. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been watching YouTube. I'm, I'm almost caught up on YouTube stuff. It's hard to catch up on YouTube stuff, though, but it plays while I'm, um. um working usually while I'm doing stuff uh, so I don't always get to comment because sometimes I want to say something but I can't right then and I don't forget to go back and say something so hmm. um, oh I know one thing I was going to talk about I want to start doing a blog post um, 
what we call it, flashback or blog post suggestion. Y'all have a blog that I did things on. I used to post on there three times a week. Um, I did that for a year or two before I ever started my YouTube channel. So there's lots of projects on there. There's some, there's everything from sewing to DIY to crochet and and you know there's not much there's, not, there's one post about knitting when I started learning to knit because it's still fairly new to me um so there's all kinds of things on there but I thought I would do a blog post recommendation how about that each when I do these uh podcasts so y'all can go check them out and uh maybe I'll find something else you like there's always a sign up down below for my blog post, uh, for my newsletter. Now my newsletter, uh, I do it every Sunday. Well, I try to do it every Sunday. I missed the last Sunday. I put one out this Sunday. <laughs> I just kind of tell you what I've been doing for the week and I put links to everything I did that week. Uh, videos, blog posts, anything like that. Um, sometimes there's um, information about upcoming shop updates that, that may get you may see before I talk about it anywhere else. So, uh, yeah, you might want to sign up for that. Um, and I lost my train of thought again. What is going on with my head? I just said, I need some more coffee. I don't know what's going on. I do know what's going on. My brain hurts because I just finished up finally the charms for the Mini Maker Bag Club this month. That goes out this week. There was one little bit that was took me forever to do. And most sane people probably would have just said, let's just do something different. But no, no, no. I persisted. It's done. <laughs> My eyes are crossed now, but it's done. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed them. Anyway, so what I'm doing with the mini make it, what was that? Okay, blog post uh, recommendation. Y'all, this is going to be one of those episodes. Um, so my blog post recommendation this week is uh, I did a blog post about how to lay how to do a scale drawing of a room layout something like that's what it's called um, for those that don't know I was a drafter for about 15 years that was my profession that's actually what I teach at the college um, is drafting um, drafting is uh, some people don't know what that means but drafting is when I talk to my students my first year students who um, may or may not know what drafting is either uh, if you look around you nearly everything someone did a drawing for before they produced it okay there's some kind of schematic there's some kind of blueprint for that and that is what drafting is right it's about how to lay that out correctly to get it ready for production um, most people associate it mainly with architect architectural drafting like for houses and buildings and such but everything you know like my glasses that I've been these are my reading glasses I have regular glasses in my my eyes but uh somebody laid this out for this design right because you got to get the dimensions correct um before you make this so you know even uh like if you buy shelves and things and they have to be put together that little drawing that shows you how to put it together a drafter probably did that um, although I have to say some of them need some more lessons in drafting because some of them things are not very well done anywho <laughs> so so that's what I teach and that's what I did for 15 years I worked in mainly uh, architectural and structural drafting uh, I dealt with precast and cast on concrete which I'm sure y'all don't want to hear about but so I did a blog post a while back because I was, when I was rearranging this room for my craft room, my maker space, um, I had random pieces of furniture and stuff because I like to thrift shop, y'all. Uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't like standard looking things uh, when it comes to storage. Anywho, I wanted to see how things would fit in there. So I measured everything that takes a bit of time I don't know how much stuff you got like the big pieces of like the shelves and the desk and the chair you know things like that and uh, then I made a scale drawing using graph paper most graph paper like if you just go buy a pad of graph paper at the store in the office department is quarter inch scale okay it's each block 
is a quarter inch if you measure it. So you can use quarter inch equals a foot scale. Okay, and I get it. I'm not going to go into that more here because I have the blog post that tells you about it. But basically, I show you how to take your room, and then you can cut out little pieces of furniture and rearrange it on the paper, which is much easier than moving furniture around. Okay, until you get it right. So I had someone. I was talking to somebody at Facebook Messenger, and they were talking about trying to get things to fit in their room that they were doing, and I suggested, recommended that blog post. So I thought I'd recommend it here too. So um, I'm going to put a link down below for it and you can go check that out and maybe you'll find it useful. Okay. Um, I do get a little technical in there because I am a drafting teacher after all, but I tried to keep it basic as I could for um, someone just wanting to rearrange a room. It's much easier to do it that way. Okay. Uh, it does take some time to measure things, but that's easier to do than moving big furniture around till you get it how you think you want it yeah so that is my blog recommendation of the week um, let's see uh, happy late Mother's Day to everybody I hope everybody had a wonderful day Sunday I called my mother because I had went over there Friday to visit and there was we were talking about Mother's Day and I was like I think I thought it was next Sunday not this past Sunday, but this coming Sunday. Whew, did not know what day it was. So, but I spent quite a bit of time with my mother. We talked and we laughed. So that was quite enjoyable. Um, my son called me and then I actually, I talked to her for a while Sunday as well. And then my son called me Sunday and we talked for a while. So, and my husband made me an omelet for breakfast. So, it was a pleasant day. Because the rest of the day I spent working on those charms. <laughs> but I didn't finish until today. But anyway. Um, yeah. Hmm, I felt like I was going to sneeze. And let's see. What have I been doing? I've been, uh, this week I'm trying to do uh, work on more makery stuff. So you're going to see more, some more videos. I actually did three videos last week. I didn't realize that before, but like I said, the Mini Maker Bag Club goes out this week. And for those curious, I did a whole video, which I'll try to put an eye thing up here for it, explaining about the Mini Maker Bag Club and the dates. Uh, the, the Mini Maker Bag Club for June will go up May 15th. And in that listing, because I've had people ask me before, the, the people who have reserve spots, they don't have to go to that listing. They're, they, they're already taken care of. I, send, I do something different for them. So, all the... When I put up that listing and I say it's available, that's for whoever wants to get it, okay? Whoever gets there first. Um, I will be doing a sneak... Uh, spoiler alert for uh, May. Yeah, May's um, Mini Maker Bag Club. Wednesday and then I will announce the theme for June's club. I just ordered fabric for today. Well, I ordered one of the fabrics. I gotta decide on the other fabrics, but anyway, I'm excited. And then Friday is the 15th, so that's when the listing will go up. And normally I'll put it up by 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday. Unless, but wait for my announcement because sometimes if something's going on or something, I may have to push it out or something like that. So that's typically what I do is put it up at 5 p.m. on that day. Okay. So if you're wondering, that's when it will come. Okay. Hold on just a second, y'all. Okay. <laughs> I'm back. My nose. Anywho. So... I think that's it. Oh, well, I was going to tell you about the snake I saw in my yard. I was walking the dogs. This was at night. And I came across what I thought at first glance. I thought it was a big earthworm. Okay, because we get some big ones sometimes. We have a lot of earthworms in our yard. There's worm poop everywhere. If you see them little mounds of dirt that look like little pellets, that's worm poop. Anyway, 
But when I got closer, because I have my little flashlight on my phone on when I walk the dogs at night so I can see, because I live in the country, not the country country, like there's, I can see neighbors on each side of me, but I have a little over an acre lot and there's not like street lights down the road. We have like a, one security light, so it gets dark. Um, and it's like, oh, look at that big worm. And I was like, wait a minute, that is not a worm. That is a snake. It's a baby snake. <laughs> but it, I knew it wasn't poisonous because it had a narrow head. It didn't move at all when I was examining it. But I looked it up. It was a mud snake, which I've never seen a mud snake before. Um, it was black. And it had like a crisscross orange pattern on its belly. So that was new to me. I've never seen one of those. But, anywho, that is my encounter with snakes. So, okay, and I'm going to do this a little bit differently. Um, typically, I do, yarny goodness, fabric obsessed, and then DIY and thrifty goodness. DIY and thrifty fun. I always do that. So, this time, I am going to do yarny goodness, but I'm going to skip the fabric obsessed until the end because really the only thing I'm going to show you is the fabrics for the next shop update, which is going to be in there by the end of May. Okay. So let's move on, shall we? Okay. It's time for yarny goodness. First thing I want to show y'all, because um, I have several whips. I don't have a finished object to show y'all. So I've started a lot of new projects here lately, even though I have plenty that I need to finish. <laughs> Um, is I won a bag from uh, Kim the Crafty Nomad and Chris, Crochet Creations by Christy. They do a live, um, well, it's called Hook and, Hook and Stitch is what it's called. And I actually got to catch the last one and watch. And um, I went on live with them for very briefly to show off some of my uh some things my mommy and my tea dottles had made me. Uh, they had a little section we could show older crocheted items and stuff. Um, because then I had to get off because we were going to meet my husband's parents for a, <laughs> a birthday thing where we parked cars beside each other and we got takeout and we talked <laughs> through the windows. Anywho, so I didn't know that put me in a drawing, but it did, and I won this little tote with their logo on it, which I think is really cute. Look at it. Hook and stitch. Wow. So this is the very first one. I don't know if they'll make more, but this is uh, it's just a basic tote. You know, it's not lined or anything, but um, yeah, I think it's really cool. And then I also got, let me grab it right quick because I forgot. It's right over here on my table. Hopefully I didn't show you all my honey or something. <laughs> Um, this is one of, because Kim is the one that sent this. She's been making these lotion bars, and I'm assuming that this, I should have messaged her and asked her. I don't know if you can use this little bit. I'm pretty sure it has tea tree oil in it, because I can smell it. And that irritates, that don't irritate my face, but I can use it on some other dry patches I have and it should be fine um, because I have eczema and psoriasis fun stuff you know but this was wrapped in a little tube of paper and twisted and I had left it there for the longest time because I was gonna show it when I showed the bag I'm gonna open it I thought it was candy <laughs> I'm gonna open it up. it's not candy but uh I think that's really cool because I've been seeing those little uh, lotion bar she's been making so I'm excited to have this um so I do have a project in this bag already um I had been working on it already but I hadn't put it in a project bag yet so I thought it would be appropriate to put it in this bag because it is uh, oh I did not put a stitch mark in this okay it is my Lost in Time shawl. Um, this is a crochet along that Kim and Christy are hosting. <laughs> and I just added, um, I already had the pattern. So I decided to start it. Oh, look at it, isn't it pretty? Yeah, 
I'm just using a I'm using a Woolies cake, which um, I had a three pack of these. I did my bumps and scales shawl uh, that I have a pattern for in my Etsy shop. Um, I have the the two of these, so I had this one cake left over. So I thought it'd be perfect for this. So I'm really liking how it turned out. This is a DK weight yarn. So I don't think it's going to be as big as some people's. Um, I think it's going to be big enough for me to, you know, <laughs> well, prettier than as a bandana. But, you know, kind of wrap around like that. I don't think it'll be like a shawl shawl, but um, I love... Um, I'm just, I'm not controlling the colors or anything. It's doing a pretty good job of that on its own. Um, I love how it's turning out. I love doing this pattern. Um, there are bits like this little kind of mesh work where you don't have to concentrate as much, but when you get to these little bubbles and stuff, you got to pay attention. Because when I first started and I got into the bubbles, I had to pull it out like three times because I kept, it's like, what am I doing? I was just, miscounting things but that's all so that is one project i've been working on is my uh lost in time shawl yep and and last when i ordered these woolies cakes just so you know i got a three pack off of walmart for like 10 bucks 10 or 11 dollars which is a pretty good price so each one of these cakes has like 590 yards in it so and it is 80% acrylic, 20% wool, just so y'all know. So, number three. I don't know if they still have them or not. I ordered these a while back. I actually have a three-pack of a different colorway. Um, this colorway is Hades. So, it's so pretty. <laughs> but there is one of my works in project. Works in project. No, my words are not coming today. Works in progress. Thank you. All right, so I also decided, I don't know. I've been sitting there. I'm like, I really I really need to finish my knitted sweater. I just got to finish the sleeves. I had no interest in it, though. Probably because it's too warm to think about sweaters. I don't know. Um, so I decided I'm going to start one of these uh, amigurumi kits I got from... Uh, Darn good yarn. I have a bunch of them over there. This is the box one. This does come with your yarn, your stuffing, your darning needle, and it actually comes with a pair of uh, some knitting double-ended needles and a crochet hook. This is plastic. I did not even attempt to crochet with that because it's so skinny. I'd probably break it. So, but luckily, it didn't say in the pattern that's included, but it does on the back say what size they are. So, and you get a little plastic uh, darning needle. So, you get all of that in there. So, I have this yarn is just kind of really basic craft acrylic, is what I call it, because it's it's a pretty it's it's not too rough. But um, here's his body. I think I did use a slightly bigger hook than it called for, but it's working out okay. And then I have, I have both his arms done. The other one's down there somewhere. I didn't stuff the arms. I just left them kind of like that because it was so tiny. Trying to stuff stuff that just didn't seem like any, didn't seem like something I wanted to do. And I think I have one ear. Yeah, there we go. What is this down here? Oh. <laughs> this left over from the last project I have in here had in here and I forgot to take it out. Anyway, there's an ear. So that's what I got done. I have an ear, both arms, and the body done. So I gotta do the head, the legs, the other ear, and then the belly part is a separate pattern. So and so one thing I wanna say about this pattern Cause it is crochet they it comes with the crochet or the knit right you crochet or you can knit it um i don't like i'm not super in love with the c 
co the color. Oh, I guess there's a tail as well. <laughs> that makes sense. The fox has a tail. <laughs> I don't really love the way knitted amigurumi looks. Um, there's some of it that I've seen that I like, but some of it I just don't like the way it looks. Um, so one thing I want to comment on is this is crochet, but every single thing that says round one, it says cast on four single crochet with a circular cast on. That is knitting terminology. Makes no sense. Um, it's pretty much the same thing they have for the first sentence in the knitting. Uh, so that is, uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with how to do that, that could be confusing. I'm just going to say that because um, it does have a little picture of a circular cast on for crochet. But that is not... It, it's it's showing you a magic loop, but it doesn't. I just did a magic loop, but that, that's way incorrect how they wrote that. Anywho, so that's one project I started. Let's see which one I'm gonna show next. I'm gonna show this one. So it was appropriate to put it in last month's uh, mini maker bag club. I usually do make sure I make me a bag. <laughs> For this so very excited about this because I love this so it like hmm, I know it was after 11 the other night what was it Saturday night maybe and I really wanted to start a new project because that's what you do at that time of night right so I decided to wind up some yarn <laughs> and start a new project. So that's what I did. So, my first project is this. Look at Get off of the string. So this is the yarn I got from Southern Skeins. I'll try to remember to put a little icon up here. So I did a whole video about my Southern Skeins yarn haul that I just did. Oh, and it's so pretty. This is called the Pothole Cowl by Melody's Makings. So you kind of, these are, you get like two rows of treble, two double, two half double, and then you do some flat, and now I'm going back the other direction. So the other end will look like this end. But look at that color, y'all. This was like the perfect pattern, crochet pattern for this yarn, because I just love the way the color lays out in it. I didn't want something with super uh, detailed stitches um, because it's a busier printed yarn but uh, I really love how this turn out. It reminds me of succulent colors um, so this will kind of I'm going to put it on my head slouch right like that like I said you have the other end that's going to look like this so I really I really like this was the perfect pattern for a skein of this. Um, and actually, I, th I have a good bit left. But, guess what? <laughs> Jenna heard me say that I would have bought two. She had two. She said she had, an she happened to have another one. And asked if I would like it. And I was like, yes, I would, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to get another one, so I'll take my leftover, pair it with that, and do something different. But I really love how this is turning out. I just, I love the colors with the pattern. It just is very interesting to me. Um, and I also, I didn't put this at the beginning. I'm going to put it in the middle because um, Jenna gave me a special code to use for my subscribers for discount in her shop. Mm -mm. It is for 20% off, which is awesome. It's T Dottles 20. I believe that's what it is. It will be in the description down below if you want to go and, with a link to her shop. Um, you can use it on her regular shop updates and your first sock club if you want to do that. Cannot use it on her advent calendars, but you can use it on your first sock club uh, if you want to do one. And um, her, the regular shop update she does with yarns, which is like when I got this. 
So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about that. And also, I'm excited because she asked me to do a crochet pattern for her advent calendar. So, um, she recently added me to the description. So, if you go there, you'll see that now. But, uh, I'm excited to do that. So, there will be a crochet pattern from me in the advent calendar. Um, there is a knitting pattern as well. And I'm trying to remember the person's name because I've seen her name before. I can't remember, but it's in the description of her advent calendar listing. So, if you haven't, if you were on the fence about ordering one, because it only had a knitting pattern, now I have a crochet pattern. I designed the crochet pattern for last year's um, advent calendar, as well as I made a bag. I'm not doing the bag this year. That is Katie Rue Designs. Um, what was the name of that kind of bag? It's the twisty one you hang. For knitting. That's a really cool bag. Um, she's doing the bag this year. And uh, so the pattern I did for um, last year's advent calendar, I did eventually put in my shop. It's in there. It's like $2. It's not too expensive. Um, but it's designed to use a bunch of mini skeins. But if you want, you can do it's a kind of it's a repetitive pattern. So you could do. It's really easy pattern to adjust. It's like a shrug. Crow's foot sh shrug. That's what's called. So this year I'm doing the crochet pattern again for her advent calendar. And this year you get minis and a full skein. So that's going to be interesting. I'm excited. I have some ideas already. So there you go. If you were thinking about doing an advent calendar but you didn't want to because of uh, you don't knit. There you go. That one's going to have a crochet pattern in it too. All right, so I've got one more work in progress to show y'all that I just started that night that I started. And this is in this little bag I got from my We Crochet kit um, that they they had last month. I'm hoping they do another one this month. I haven't seen it. They're, this month's magazine is digital download only right now but I'm waiting for the physical copy because it's like a book it's not a magazine and I got some stuff to show you I got from them in a minute so um so this this is what I decided you'll always see all this yarn here now most of this yarn in this little hanging thing is where I did the different indie dyer clubs last year so I decided to start using one like, I'll take one out and do a project, and then I'll take a new one out. And then when it's empty, I'll fill it back up again with something fun. Um, this is by no means all the yarn I have, if you've ever, if you're new to the channel. <laughs> it's just a, a place to store some random skeins. <laughs> I have a whole bin over there full of Southern Skeins yarn. Uh, and some, and it's starting to accumulate what I'm getting from Lolo did it from the Dumbledore Quotes Club, which is the Tweety yarn, and you know I've got I've got I've got a little shelf over here with yarn stuff on it. I've got a shelf and a bin basket thing over here with yarn on it. I've got yarn up here. I've got yarn in little bins under my shelf, and in my son's old room I have bins and <laughs> bins of yarn. Yes, it's crazy. And I may or may not have ordered some yarn earlier today but we'll talk about that in a little bit <laughs> so let's look at this project this is do I want to show you the pattern first or the yarn first eh. okay so I picked up just the first one that was on top right here this little hole that's missing up here are my darn good yarn sock clubs that I still want to make and then the, that is all darn good random skeins of darn good yarn that I stuck up there but I picked this one this is from Tippy Tree Yarns. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. Tippy Tree Yarns. And this was her October 2019 club. It was called Maleficent. Now this is sock yarn. So it's fingering weight. It's uh, 463 yards. 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. So it was a really fun colorway. I really liked it. It was like these tonal grays and whites with little splashes of red. So it was called Maleficent. 
who is the evil queen from no, that's she's not from Snow White. Is, no, I don't know. Is it Snow White or Sleeping Beauty? I don't remember, but she's from one of those fairy tales. Anywho, um, so this is my very beginning of what I'm doing with this yarn, which I love the way it's starting out. Um, I'm gonna show you the pattern. So when I saw the pattern, I was like, this is perfect. Okay, this is the pattern I'm making. This little shawlette with the little pointy ends, isn't that perfect? For a yarn called Maleficent? I think so. This is called the blue Sky Blue Shawlette, which is not a very <laughs> not a very imaginative uh name. That's pretty just the description of what that is. But this is a pattern I got from I Like Crochet magazine. I'm subscribed to them. It's a digital magazine only. Um they are one of my affiliates. So yes, I have a lot of crafty affiliates, but I have a blog and most of that comes from when I had a blog and I put things when I buy things, you know, whatever. Um, so this is, I don't remember which magazine it's out. But when you sign up for the subscription, you get access to all back, uh, back issues of the magazine. So as long as you have a subscription, you can go in there and look at any magazine you want to. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, I had a little, some issues. There's a, a miscount. And one of the, the very first things, it's just not counted correctly. I, I, I did them. I laid it out on graph paper because I was like, this is not making any sense. Why does this keep being wrong? It's just, it's wrong. Okay? Anyway, I got past that. And you can see it has this little puff stitches that go down and then the, it just gradually fans out. Yeah, this is perfect for this yarn, y'all. And I'm loving the way it's turning out. So, yeah, this looks really tiny right now, right? Because if we took this, it's supposed to button or anything. It looks like it's gonna choke me. But we have to remember is that this is gonna block out just gonna have that one button which should be fine this is gonna be fun to wear because this looks like something Maleficent would wear doesn't it and this is how it looking in crochet because some people wonder how those hand dyed yarns look in crochet they do look different most of the time but this has some interesting stitches and and just having those splotches of red it just makes it look I think it's great so and I do have my stitch marker that came with my yarn. It's a little glass. Eh, it's a little glass butterfly. You're not going to be able to tell that. But that is the other project I started. Which I think will move along fairly quickly since I finally figured out what was going on at that very top band. And it's just going to go out with the puff stitches and you grip, that piece in the middle gets bigger. So, yeah. Nothing too complicated about that pattern. But I think it's going to look so cool. So that is, those are all my whips. Y'all, this is going to be a long video. It'll be okay. So now, let's talk about my yarny type of acquisitions. I just, I did a whole video for just Southern Skeins yarn because I had so much of it. And I felt like I would just do a whole video. So I have a couple of other things to show y'all. Um, I did, I ordered this a while back, but it just finally came in. Um, this was a limited edition spring 2020 yarn from uh, Darn Good Yarns, Lace Weight Silk, Pastel Green, Pastel Green, Pastel Dreams. Whatever. I thought this was so pretty. Look at this. I really love that speckling that's going on. You see it better. Oh, look at it. Isn't it so pretty? I love the colors in this. Yeah. That's going to be something really fun. You can, can you see that there's some speckling going on here? With the orange. It's just a really beautiful. There's some speckles up in the blue, too. It's hard to see here, but we can see it really good right there. You see that purple in there? Ooh, I just really loved this. I thought it was pretty, so I got one. Um, like I said, I ordered this just before they 
stopped shipping for a while because of everything that's going on. So, um, it finally came in. Well, it actually came in a couple of weeks ago. I just haven't shown it yet. <laughs> and then, I actually ordered one of the Furls Crochet uh, Quarantine Kits. I think that's what they were calling them. Um, where part of the proceeds went to help, um, I don't remember y'all. I'm just going to be honest. It went to help some kind of health care workers or something like that. But, uh, you got a Furls uh, Crochet Hook and a little skein of their Wims Merino. Which is Z Twist Crocheters yarn, which is interesting. It's very, it's it's pretty soft, yeah. Um, I got it in this what is it, a teal colorway. This is 50% superwash merino wool and 50% nylon. There's just 103 yards on here. It's a number four weight. I think you could get a DK weight as well. But uh, they had several patterns that came with it for using just this one little skein. And then, of course, I got a Furls crochet hook. This is the first time I've ever had a Furls crochet hook. I've never had one. Um, I haven't used it yet, so I don't know if I'm going to love it or not. I do love the way it looks. I got this cookies and cream colorway, which I really like. I think it looks really cool. These, this is, uh, and it has that engraved and kind of painted looking, uh, with the logo and the number, the, the size on it. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to trying it out, um, and seeing if I like it. I do prefer usually the, uh, squishy kind of handles. So, um, we'll see how I like this, um. And I will pick one of the projects that they suggested and use this to make it. It's it's pretty soft yarn. I'm interested to try it because it's also it's the Z twist yarn, which I've never tried that before. So that those are my two yarny acquisitions. Blah, 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 blah. Then I just want to show you this postcard first. I ordered actually I ordered some books from We Crochet because um they had a sale on their books. Uh, look at the postcard. The little There's a code on the back of this for me. But look at that. Isn't that pretty? I just love that. Uh, I'm going to keep that and use it for something. It's very pretty. So I wanted I wanted issue one of their We, we Crochet magazine. Because I have issue two. I ordered it with that little kit. So I wanted issue one. Uh, I've got something on there. So this is issue one. This is what I was talking about with their magazines. They're like $14.99, but they're a book. They're not a magazine. They call them a magazine. This one's smaller than the one I got. This is the second one, but it was their first one. So, And there's some awesome patterns in here, y'all. Just look at the And they have these beautiful layouts. I mean, who doesn't want to look at that if you love yarn? Let me see if I can find... There's a sweater in here that I'm just like... Oh my god, and these are all crochet patterns. This is a sister site to Knit Picks, We Crochet. So this is all about crochet. Well, there's Knit Picks, it's all about knitting. So, I was going to look at that crochet along challenge, but that's really... Okay, some of those are... Yeah, my brain ain't working. So, let's see... This is a cute, look at this. It's got little bees in it. It's like a honeycomb pattern. That's fun. And even though this is a kid's, oh, look at that buffalo plaid wrap. I love that. I love this sweater, even though it's a kid's sweater. I like it. And then off to the side, it'll tell you what they used and where the pattern the, on the picture has the pattern where the pattern is on the page. So these pattern these are all patterns in this book. Okay. Now these sweaters. Look at I love this sweater right here. Look at it. How pretty is that? That is a pretty sweater. And this one here 
the texture and then you got some color work up at the top and yes that's all crocheted and at the cuffs that is an awesome sweater i love that there's a lot of other patterns. i'm not gonna show all of them but you know this um i, I need to put this up okay <laughs> i get distracted so i highly recommend their crochet magazine even though it's not a magazine it's a book because it's like it's like a paperback book okay so you get it's a great price and right now you can download a digital copy of the third one i'm waiting for the print because i'm going to be collecting those um so then and they do still have some books on sale but it's not a sale like what i got these from because this was i got this one for 8.99 instead of 14.99 because it's a back issue but it's currently regular price right now so i also got this book edward's menagerie um yeah it's got little animals in it you can see them they're crocheted amigurumi animals um there was a good price on this and i really liked it plus i was trying to hit that free shipping mark their free shipping is 35 dollars. you get free shipping so that's not too bad at all um i wanted to find There's all kinds of fun stuff in here, but I was looking for, in particular, this Angora Bunny, because I think he's really cute. This would be fun just to make for little gifts for people. Uh, he's cute, too, but yeah, I'm not going to be able to find it, because, oh, there he is. This is, well, Lauren, the Angora Rabbit. Look at it. <laughs> I really like it I like it that's cute so then I also got this 500 crochet stitches the ultimate crochet stitch Bible because I think this could be very useful yeah I'm excited about this so I have a digital crochet stitch book which is what I had been making my rectangles out of which I haven't done that in a while either because I got that bullion stitch threw me off just need to move on this has I like the pictures in here better already I guess it's kind of similar to the other one but it's not on, I don't I'm not looking at it usually I'm looking at that on my phone because I'm watching something on my computer you know whatever anyway I liked this book so those are the books I got from we crochet so um they are an affiliate of mine so those links will be affiliate links down below which means I just get a small percentage of any sale that anything you purchase at that link I get a small percentage of but it doesn't change your price in any way it's just like it's kind of like I advertise for them but I don't get paid unless somebody buys something it's kind of like that all right I think it's time for the next segment okay it's time for a DIY and thrifty fun which, like I said in the beginning, I'm moving ahead of Fabric Obsessed. Because Fabric Obsessed is really not much to it. Because I haven't sewn anything but bags. Um, so, the first thing I want to show you. Because I've been waiting to show you all this. I was so excited to get it in the mail. It is the coldest little thing. I'm going down a rabbit hole on Etsy. Um, I showed you all those, in, those uh, vintage necklaces I bought from Cantiques antique something i can't remember and then so i then have since ordered a what she called a junk drawer junk drawer it had a bunch of random things in it it has several cool little bottles in there and so i ordered it and then i was like hmm let me type in junk drawer in the search box for etsy oh my gosh i went down a rabbit hole on that because that's just, I love things like that. And it's the closest thing I can get to going to a thrift store right now. So, yeah. If you love things like that, just try typing in junk drawer on Etsy. There's everything from, that. there's all kinds of stuff. It's just, just all kinds of stuff. Anyway, so I've also been looking up vintage jewelry on Etsy because I've developed, I don't know, I just... I'm in love with it right now for some reason but all right I'm gonna show you this I found this 
Look at this pen. Please focus. Oh, I'm gonna have to do it. Look at him. This cool little owl. And his glasses come up. He's got little red stones. Look at him. This is a pen. And then it came with this thing that it's sitting in to hold it. It's just a frame. It's like a well, I say this is wooden. I don't know for sure. It might be plastic. I don't know. It's been painted in a cool way. It's a bare lap. It has felt pad on the back. You can hang it up like that if you want to. But yeah. I paid $20 for this. I can't remember the shop, but I'll link it down below. But this little pen, I had to have it when I saw it. He is so cool. I love owls. And he has glasses. And then when I saw that the glasses move... Yeah, plus it came with this cool back thing. Now, I saw this pen at another listing after I bought this. It was like $17.85 just for the pen. It didn't come with this cool little thing. And uh, it said who the person was that made these pens. I don't know. But I just think he's the coolest. And I love it. So, it's even better in person than when I've seen it online. I just love him. I don't know. I may just hang him up on the wall just like that. Um, I'll probably pin him on me on my jacket or something like when I go to school, back to school. It'll be really cool. So I got that. And then I got him my order from Zip It Zipper Supply on Etsy, which is where I order all my zippers. Which they are currently taking orders only on Tuesday between 6 and 7. <laughs> and I think that's a different time zone than I'm in. But, because they have, the note, notice said that their kids are all at home and they can only do taking orders then and ship then. They can't do full-time stuff right now. So, um, I made sure to order... Plenty of zippers. <laughs> Y'all, this is like 200 zippers. <laughs> ordered like 100 in this size and 100 in this size. Um, in various colors. I got like five of each color. Of a bunch of different colors. To make sure I had a good range. Then they had some clearance metal zippers that I got. These have the use these in my traveler making bags these are the long zippers for various things and then i got this little pack of metal zippers because it was on clearance and i can use them for some things so yeah i got a bunch of zippers i shouldn't need zippers for a while <laughs> you see some zippers back here you're thinking why do you need zippers but the reality is um sometimes I like my zipper to, sometimes I want it to coordinate with the bag, but sometimes I want it to stand out from the bag. So I like to have a variety to pick from. Anyway, I won't need to buy zippers for a while, most likely. I mean, if I use all those zippers anytime soon, before the end of the year even, that's a lot of zippers. <laughs> so next, now I showed you this one before, a while back I had did Annie's Simply Beads Kit of the Month, right? I still haven't made it, but um, I had gotten a coupon for a free one. Decided to try it. Didn't keep the subscription, but uh, you make the necklace, the bracelet, the earrings, and the first kit comes with a beading mat, which I actually used when I was making my charms, maker charms, and this multi-tool, okay? So then after that, you just get basically get, oh it came with a, a beading guide too for the first kit and a lot of times you can get it half off or sometimes if you're signed up for the email you can get a free one um i will check because they are an affiliate of mine too to see but what i decided to do it's like hey i'm gonna order mary maxim has a beading kit an, a jewelry kit and darn good yarn has a, a jewelry kit or a jewelry of the month box so I decided to order their first boxes 
to see, to compare them, okay? I've already recorded part of the video. I've actually already made one of the necklaces, but once I finish making the necklaces, then I will compare them. And I've already gotten a second box from Darn Good Yarn and Mary Maxim because I ordered those both right before they <laughs> stopped shipping for a while. And then I finally got it in and then I, had, I got billed for the second one before I even got the first one. And now I've gotten the second one as well. So anyway, I didn't do a second one of the Annie's, but I have a second one of, of this. I'm going to show you briefly, but I talk about it more in that video. So this is the Mary Maxim kit that I got. This is the first one. And it has a tool in it and beads and a mat. And you can make, what do you make? Like, I want to say two necklaces, a pair of earrings and two bracelets or something like that with that so that's the first kit and i've already got the second kit so this is the second kit it also comes with tool and a mat so with mary maxim you get a kit every time you don't just get that stuff in the beginning you get which this one has more chains than uh beads i don't think this has any beads in it actually i think it's all chains but so this is the second kit so far for Mary Maxim. And then I've got two Darn Good Yarn kit, the uh, bead kits. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you this, but I'll talk about it more when I do my review comparing the three, okay? So the first one was this necklace, and this is the one I've already made. Right, so there is the necklace that I made, which I really like. Um, so that's the necklace I made. So I'm not. I will. Uh, I will put links down to them below if y'all want to go check all of these out. Um, but I'm gonna do when I finish my making the the other two, then I will uh, post my video with my review because the first part of the video I recorded. Is just talking about each kit and what came in it and how much it was so um yeah that'll be coming out may not be this week probably next week so um yeah i think that that is all my diy and thrifty goodness i have not gotten to work on my grim gables house yet again i hope i get to work on it some this week but we'll see um yeah i uh I think that's all for this one. This one's a short little segment, but some fun stuff coming up, I think, in it. So I'm excited about that. So I think we will move on to the next segment. Yes. Okay, time for Fabric Obsessed. And as I said, I don't have anything to show you that I've sewn because um, I did that whole video of all the bags I sewed. So that's what I've been doing. That and mask, and now I'm working on the Mini Maker Bag Gloves. So, I don't, wait, I have this thing I need to get out. So, I've got, did get my very last packet from um, Cotton Cuts with a cotton mystery puzzle quilt. It does have the pattern in it, which I'm excited about. I think I have two I haven't sewn over there plus this one. Now, this has all the fabric for the binding as well. So I will get that finished up and have a quilt top. I won't quilt it right now. I don't have time for that, but because I have some t-shirt quilts in there I need to finish. Oh, this is cute. It's like a little pin kit to make that little a uh, little felt pin. That uh, that's fun. So that was a little bonus in there this month. So Actually, I think this is just, these just look like strips. Oh, it's probably for the border. That's what that's for. So I don't have anything to sew here except cutting out the binding. I have two, and I have to sew all the blocks together. So, maybe I'll get that done this week. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> they do have a new one coming up. Uh. Their fall one starts May 29th, 
and there's those colorways and then these colorways to choose from which some of them look pretty cool but I really didn't want to do another one right now oh I can't I can't I can't, can't, can't. Hmm. there's a coupon on there but sad because I have other I have like I said I have a king and a queen size t-shirt quilt in there that I need to work on but yeah but anyway I wanted to show you all the fabrics that will be in my next shop update which will be I should have it uh hopefully have things ready by the end of May we'll see how it goes um because once I finish the shop update this week I'm going to take a little break it's going to be a break weekend because I need it um and then I will start on bags for the next shop update uh so, my next shop update, if you have my newsletter, you already know, if you read that part of the, of the newsletter, that it's called, the theme is Country Living, is what I'm calling it, um, because of the fabrics I'm using. It's not going to be as big of a shop update as the last one. I'm trying to do, I did that big one in hopes that there would be things in the shop sale. There's still some stuff in the shop, although y'all nearly cleaned me out again. I love it, don't get me wrong, but it's like, oh! there's a, I wish I could do more <laughs> so um so um it, I was planning on doing it like two shop updates a month at the beginning of the year that's what I had thought I would do but it didn't work out that way of course I think everybody's year kind of went into the toilet what their plans were after all this stuff happened so you know it's just you, you gotta rethink things anyway so the reason I'm calling it country living let's see first we've got these fabulous fabrics. Um, these are like farm life. Yeah, let's just open this up a little bit because this is a fabulous print. I have a good bit of it. And this is not a canvas, but this fabric feels thicker. Maybe it's just because it's folded so much. Oh, it's just because it's folded so much. Anyway, I'm planning on, because I have a good bit of this, I found this at a fat quarter shop I want to say so this print is all about farm life I have two packets of this because it was in two different yardage cuts I do plan on making a couple of, of my mega maker totes out of this um, I have some waterproof fabric that I'm thinking about putting on the inside I know that sounds weird but what I'm thinking about with these mega maker totes is Someone mentioned that you could use it for groceries, and I thought well, waterproof fabric would be good for groceries too. And it would, or a day at the market, if you get to go back to a market to pick up produce and things. But the inside is what needs to be waterproof for that, or something that's easily cleaned versus the outside. Okay, because the other prints that I have are waterproof on the outside, not the inside, if that makes sense. So, so you would have this quilted fabric on the outside and then a waterproof fabric on the inside. Now you can waterproof cotton to a certain extent. They have sprays for that and everything, but I'm not doing all that. <laughs> so we have this print, which I love. And this print is very similar, but this is all about canning, which I am a canner. I'm a canner. <laughs> I haven't canned anything in a while, but I am gonna be canning some jelly. Maybe by the end of this week, I don't know. Mayhall jelly. You haven't never had Mayhall jelly. It's the best, in my opinion. My parents actually have some Mayhall trees, which they are coming becoming kind of scarce in the area. Mayhall trees like to grow by uh, ponds, really. They like damp environments. Um, there used to be a place we went to that you could get the Mayhalls. Now, a Mayhall tree, you don't pick the berries. They kind of look like a little crab apple. And there's mostly seed inside. It's not a good berry to eat by itself. It makes really good jelly. They smell really good too. Um, but they taste kind of sour and not very sweet. <laughs> so they, there's huge thorns on a Mayhaw tree. And when I say Mayhaw, I'm saying M-A-Y-H-A-W, Mayhaw. And I think they get the name because typically they already in May. My dad says finished, I think, already, because he had some people come and get berries um, 
takes quite a bit to make to fill it up because they're small but anyway I have a bunch of juice in the freezer that needs to be made it's not hard to make jelly once you have the juice and you don't pick them off the tree you shake the tree onto like plastic or sometimes people use an old sheet because then they're you know they're ready if they fall off the tree um, and you don't want to be sticking your hand up in the branches because like I said they got big thorns on them so anyway I think I have a blog post I haven't done a blog post about May Hall tree picking so it has a little gif in there my dad's shaking a tree so I'll have to put that down there mm -hmm. so anyway this this fabric is about canning right one year I canned a ton of pickles I do I have canned dill pickles sweet pickles bread and butter pickles hot sweet pickles oh my gosh I put a jalapeno in there with my sweet pickles and I about burnt my nose hairs out anyway <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my family has always been uh, we, we can things and one year it was a year of the tomatoes I went with my husband's grandmother her brothers are farmers and they had a farmer friend who had a tomato field that he said we could go get tomatoes in because they were done picking there was still a ton of tomatoes in that field y'all and me and her went I filled up her whole vehicle full of tomatoes which was plenty. I took on plenty. More than enough. I don't know if you've ever canned tomatoes. But you have to take the peeling off. And it's a process. My husband's grandmother went back. I don't know how many times got more tomatoes. She had like hundreds of cans of tomatoes. They're so good though. You pick them at the peak of freshness. And can them. It's like summer in a can or a jar. Canning is a weird term since most of the time it's done in jars. Um... <laughs> It's uh, like summer in a jar in the wintertime if you open it up. It's fabulous. Anyway, so I have those two printy wordy fabrics, which I love wordy fabrics. This one's about canning. This one's, uh, it looks similar, but it's more about farming things. There's farming print stuff on it. Now this cute print with little tractors going everywhere on it. And I have this print, which has jars on it. And it just says, jars on there. It doesn't say ball or anything. It just says jars. That's what that little word is. And then I have this chicken wire fabric. Hmm. So those are all I'm sure I'll blend in some other fabrics with them, but those are the main prints, so to speak. And then I have some with bees. Um, this one has, it's a floral print, but it has a bees in there. You can see. And then I have this, which is there's the same fabric design or not but those bees are very similar this is all over bees but it's in a navy print and then I have this bee print with honeycombs and bees mm. I have some cousins who raise bees they have uh, beehives and I've actually gotten some honey from mama it's quite delicious um, they have one of their granddaughters that actually helps and she's how old is she I would say she's seven, maybe, seven, eight, but she'll put on her little beekeeper suit and go out there and do the bees. <laughs> so, that is what you can look forward to in the country living update coming at the end of the month. Um, I will put a little bit of everything in there like I did this time. Um, you will see the Mega Maker tote. I haven't made any uh, Mega Maker and I think it's because the Mega Maker bag, like the drawstring, the big bag, and then the Traveling Maker bag. Uh, traveling Maker bag just takes longer to do. Mega Maker drawstring tote, not really any more than the, the Mega Maker tote, but I use heavier weight fabrics for that. And I guess I feel like they're more wintry fall things, but that's just crazy. Anyway, we'll see if I get one out. Nobody knows. So, and I also wanted to talk a bit about, um, that's why I put this at the end because it's kind of shop talk more so than <laughs> just a, a sewing fun fabric stuff. I do plan on sewing some clothes coming up. Hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping to get some of that stuff cut out, maybe even started next week, this weekend. And then I'm going to do some videos about that. Um, but I wanted to talk about the advent calendar because that is 
going to go up for sale in June. Now, I haven't settled on a price yet, okay? But I have settled on some things I wanted to talk about. Um, there will be a 24-day advent calendar and a 12-day advent calendar, okay? The 24-day advent calendar will be... Uh, the way I'm dividing this up, because it's a maker advent calendar, um, you're going to make little projects, okay? So the the 24 day one, you will make a project every four days. So that is six projects. And the 12 day one is three projects, okay? So it's gonna obviously be cheaper. And the 12 day one will come with a mini maker bag. The 24 day one will come with a maker bag. So the bigger drawstring bag. <clears throat> the bigger one I will have payments set up for. The smaller one I will not, okay? Um, and then the projects will run like this, okay? So I've, I've decided I'm gonna have some kind of fabric thread type project like embroidery or uh, something involving fabric type of thing. And I will have a yarny type project in there. And I will have a DIY type project in there. So with the 24 day one, you will get two fabric projects, two yarny projects, and two DIY projects. And I divide my stuff up like that. I thought that was appropriate. So in the smaller one, you'll just get one of each of those, right? So uh, the bigger one will be double your fun. Mm. I'm not going to necessarily say that the smaller one will be half as much as the bigger one because I'm still working out where I'm going to source the things and what I'm actually going to do in the in, in the thing. So, the way it'll work is, like, since I said every four days you'll have a project, what it'll be is you'll open up things to make that project over a course of four days, and then you'll have where you can make your project, right? So, that's how it's going to work. Um, most people said that they would prefer to have projects to make versus just random maker supplies, which makes sense to me, okay? Um, this is new to me, so bear with me as I try to work through this and get all the details out. I'm hoping to have it up between the 15th of June and the end of June, okay? If I can do it earlier, I will, okay? Uh, I'm still working out some details. It's because I wanted to give y'all, was that, June, July, August, September, October, November. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to do it with six payments. So it's probably going to be five because I need to ship it out by November 15th or thereabouts so y'all can have everybody have their stuff, right? So probably be divided up in five payments, something like that, okay? Uh, for the bigger one. The smaller one will not be that way. Now, I will say there will be a limited number of spots just like the Mini Maker Bag Club because I will still be doing the Mini Maker Bag Club and hopefully regular shop updates. While I put this together, of course, this is spread out every month, so I'm planning on trying to do a little bit each month for this, so that, yeah. So, currently, I'm looking at probably, unless feedback tells me differently, 25 spots for the bigger club and 25 spots for the smaller club, which is 50, because I have 50 spots in the Mini Maker Bag Club, too. That's probably going to be my limit, y'all, Okay. Okay, now if I see that more people want one than the other, I may move some spots around or something like that. I may do that. We'll see. So, something to think about if it's something you're interested in that is coming up. I'm super excited about it. I've never seen another advent calendar like it. I hope that y'all enjoy it. I've already, of course, been the brain, the gears are turning, and I have little things, little plans, little maker plans. Uh, so I'm excited about it so but for now I think I'm gonna let y'all go because this is gonna be a really long video and I have to process it I will put something on YouTube letting y'all know that this is probably not gonna come out till tomorrow morning because it's gonna have to upload overnight got to have my computer to watch my Netflix or Amazon or whatever I'm gonna watch while I do my crochet in tonight Y'all remember to have a life lived creatively, and I will see y'all 
on Wednesday. So y'all can see what's in the Mini Maker Bag Club. Ooh, I'm excited about that too. All right, bye y'all.